There's a passage in the canon where the Buddha talks about how to feed the factors for awakening. And it's a strange passage. In each case he'll talk about a potential within the body or in the mind. Dhammas, he says, they can act as a foundation for that particular factor for awakening. And although in some cases he is explicit about what those factors can be, in others he's very vague. For instance, with rapture, he says there's a potential for rapture, but he doesn't say what it is. Similarly, with calm, equanimity, persistence, concentration, he simply says there are potentials within you to be developed. Now, in some cases, you can trace those potentials down to other passages in the canon. For instance, with mindfulness, he says, the potential for mindfulness. In another passage, he says, is views made straight and and virtue. In other words, you have right view, and you have behavior that doesn't put up walls inside. If you break the precepts, there are going to be times when you realize you've harmed this person or harmed that person. You've harmed yourself. And you don't want to think about those things, so you put up a wall, which makes it hard to remember those things. It's hard to learn from them. And similarly with persistence. During a heat wave like this, pretend to be depleted. But it's good to remember that what the Buddha has to say, that there is a potential within you for energy. That seems to be the main message of that passage, the whole, whole passage, is that you have potentials within you. Look into them. This relates to the, the teaching on Dhatu, which you translate as element or property. For the most part, these elements or properties don't just sit there. They lie there latent. But if you provoke them, they show themselves, sometimes in very extreme cases. When the water property is provoked, their floods, when the fire property is provoked, their firestorms. Wind property, of course, the wind storms. Now, the physical property is the only one that doesn't get provoked is earth. It just sits there. But it's unusual in that way. And there are also mental properties. And this is what you want to look into. Because the mind is a generator. It has puts out more energy than it takes in. Sometimes we don't feel that way. But they've done studies to show that you expend more calories in a day than you take in in terms of your food. There's something in there that's creating energy. And as the Buddha would say, it's the mind. So when you're feeling tired, when you're feeling depleted, look into your mind. There are potentials there. And one good place to look for advice is to go through the various lists where the Buddha talks about persistence as a member of groups of dhammas and what comes before it. In the case of the basis of success, there's desire. You find it's a lot easier to sit meditate when you want to meditate and when you don't. Well, desire is something that you can generate. You think of different ways of why you would want to meditate. You want to put in the energy. You can think about what happens to people when they don't practice, when they don't train their minds. And you don't want to be in that situation. You go to some old folks' homes. And you see people who, with untrained minds dealing with the ravages of aging, the ravages of approaching death. And it's really a sad sight to see. You have to ask yourself, do you want to be there? I 
remember looking after my father when he was sick one time. This was after I'd been looking after John Fuang. And the difference was striking. Physically, my father was a big, strong man. But when illness hit, he was very weak in the face of the illness. Whereas the John Fuang had been very strong. And I attributed that to a John Fuang's having practiced. So find ways to generate desire as a way of giving yourself energy. In the five strengths or the five faculties, persistence comes after conviction. This goes hand in hand with desire. You want to find an end to suffering. You want to at least alleviate a lot of your suffering. And if you believe that the Buddha was awakened and that he proved that human beings can do this, that gives you a lot of energy right there. Now, Ananda would recommend that you augment your conviction with conceit and craving. Conceit for him was the thought, there are beings who have found an end to suffering. They're human beings, I'm a human being. They can do it, why can't I? That's a skillful use of conceit. Similarly with craving, you hear that there are those who have put an end to suffering. And it's perfectly okay to want to do that. Don't believe the people who tell you that the desire to put an end to suffering or the desire to awakening is the one thing that keeps you from being awakened. The desire is an important motive part of the path. So there is a role for craving and there is a role for conceit as you develop your conviction. The factors for awakening themselves. Persistence comes after analysis of qualities. In other words, you look into your mind and you're trying to figure out what in there is skillful and what in there is not. And you try to develop what's skillful. Sometimes it may seem just to be a tiny part of the mind as you're assailed on all sides by thoughts of this, that, thoughts of discouragement, thoughts of anger over something. thoughts of frustration with yourself, well, those are not going to help you. So you don't want to feed those. And how do we feed those thoughts? We pay attention to them. So you've got to find a part of the mind that just doesn't pay attention to thoughts like that. There's a part of the mind that simply watches what's going on. Find that inside you. Hold on to that. And if anything comes up that's discouraging, anything else that comes up that's frustrating, don't be surprised by it. And don't get entangled with it. Just ask yourself, well, what else is new? Anger comes up, what else is new? Lust comes up, what else is new? You've seen these things before. They last for a while, and then they go. And if you give primary attention simply to a state of awareness, there's not much left over to pay attention to those other thoughts. You need to let them go. This is where it's useful to think in John Lee's terms. There are all kinds of little animals going through your bloodstream. Maybe these thoughts of lust and anger are theirs. They've learned how to dress them up so they make you think they, they're yours. Why oh, believe in the disguise? Just let them go, let them go, let them go. Because this, quali <clears throat> this quality of awareness is open. It's like the screen on a window. The breeze can come in through the screen, and the screen doesn't have to catch anything, so it's not disturbed by the breeze. And 
that way you can hold on to something skillful inside, which is the determination not to give in to unskillful thinking. And you can augment that with your analysis of the qualities of the mind. Remembering that the qualities of the mind, if you don't pay attention to them, don't last. And they'll last for a little while. But they're, they're like a dog that's come to you for food. And if you don't feed it after a while, it'll lose interest. It'll whine and create trouble for a little bit to catch your attention. But if you're firm, ignore it. It'll go away. In the meantime, that sense of awareness gets stronger and stronger as you hold on to it, because you're feeding it, paying attention to it. And that becomes your refuge as unskillful qualities keep coming at you. The important point is that you realize that you do have these potentials inside you. When they talk about accepting the present moment, if you really accept the present moment, you accept the fact that there are potentials here, potentials you can work with. After all, this is what the, the art of meditation is all about. As with any art, you, you start with some raw materials that look pretty, pretty unpromising. Like for a painting, you have a blank canvas. You've got some brushes, and you've got some paints. And if you're unskilled, you don't realize what potentials you can get out of that canvas. But if you develop skill, you can get some amazing effects. The potentials are there. It's just learning how to provoke the right ones and starve the ones that are not going to be helpful. And that way you find that you have more energy, you have more persistence, you have more stamina. The same principle applies to all the factors for awakening. They have their potentials within you, and the art of meditation is learning how to take those potentials and make something out of them, so that the blank canvas doesn't sit there as a blank canvas. It can become a thing of beauty.